All right, how's it going? Welcome to this episode of a Marginal Fly Fisherman. So I get a lot of questions. All right, I get a couple questions. I don't get a lot of questions like I'm like some big shot. I get a couple questions every now and then because I post pictures. So people want to know, where'd you catch that fish, dude? So I do a lot of brook trout fishing and I, and I, I get a lot of, where can I find brook trout? I don't have any brook trout streams. I don't know how to find brook trout in the Adirondacks. Where should I go? Can you show me where they are? So I thought it would be a cool episode if I told you, if I give you some tips on how to find brook trout. Now, I go after them in the Adirondacks, but this is probably gonna, this will probably, if I had to guess, relate to any fish any trout, anywhere you are. Me, I'm in New York. I go to the Adirondacks. Make this work wherever you are. I bet it'll work. Okay? So, let me wet my whistle. And here we go. These are my, I don't even know how many steps I have. These are my marginal fly fisherman, four steps to finding brook trout in the Adirondacks or anywhere you are. Okay, these are the four things you need to find brook trout. The four things you need number one, number one would be a map. Now, the map you're going to want is going to be where you think you want to go. Okay, so if you're like me and it's the Adirondacks, you're gonna want a map of New York State. Most importantly, a map of the Adirondacks. This is New York State, this is the Adirondacks. And then I got others that are specific portions of the Adirondacks because I've been there so I got the maps for them. But what I'm saying is you need a map. You should probably learn how to read the map. That goes along with having the maps. Reading maps is not that hard. You look at the map, and the map has, see this blue, that's water. And the stuff that's not blue is land. And there's lines. And if the lines aren't blue, they're probably roads. So this is how a map works. So what you wanna do, what I do, is I decide what area I think I wanna go to. Maybe I don't, maybe I just throw a dart. But I'll do this. And then, I'll see if there's a blue line. And if there's a blue line, I will look that blue line up. Whatever the name of it is, this is where today's technology is pretty awesome. I'll get back to that. I'm gonna go through all the stages first and then I'll get back to how today's technology plays into all this. So you need a map. You need a map of at least the state that you're gonna to go to if not the general area you think you want to go to. Okay, number one, you need a map. Number two, of things you need to find brook trout. Number two would be, you need boots. Wading boots, hiking boots, maybe an old pair of sneakers, but probably boots. I like wading boots because when you get where you're going you can get in the water and not worry about falling and sliding around and stubbing your toes on rocks uh tripping on tree roots and twisting your ankles on the way there you want a good boot that you can both hike in on your way in and wade in once you get there so it's probably going to be your wading boots whether they go over your waders or there are some of those really cool, like wet wading boots and shoes that companies like Sims make. They're pretty awesome. So you need a mat, number one, and you need boots, number two. <laughs> pretty cool, who would have thought? You didn't know you were gonna get this kind of information from me, that I was just gonna totally blow all the secrets right out of the water. Okay, number three for things you need to find brook trout. You need a fly rod. Okay, so 
a fly rod for brook trout in the Adirondacks, if you're talking, unless you're talking lakes with where some where you can find big brook trout, you're probably not going to need much more than a three weight because brook trout in the Adirondack streams, and that's what I'm talking about, average anywhere from three inches up to 10 or 11 inches. 10 or 11 inches in an Adirondack stream generally, not always, but generally is a trophy fish. Small fish, as big as they get, 10 or 11 inches. You can go places where you can get big brook trout, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about going out, hiking, into the Adirondacks and finding brook trout in streams. That's what you want to know. That's what I'm telling you about. You don't need much. I fish with a six and a half foot three weight usually. It's a short one. Uh, I think I have three of them. JP Ross made all of them. Um, one's glass, one's graphite. No, two are glass and one's graphite, but they're all like six and a half foot rods. That's my choice. I do know people who fish these small streams with eight, nine, and 10 foot rods. Good for them. You can do whatever you want, but you need a fly rod. The smaller rods are easier to walk through the woods. I can tell you that much. An eight or nine or 10 foot rod when you're trying to get to the next hole on the stream that you found is a pain in the butt, okay? When you're trying to walk through the trees. Short rods, I don't care what anybody else says. My opinion is short rods in the Adirondacks for little brook trout and little streams are perfect all right so number four for things you need to find brook trout you need a fly box brook trout in my experience are not picky you can you can you can research the bugs that are in the area that are in the Adirondacks that are in the Rockies, wherever it is you're going to fish for your brook trout to look for them. But brook trout are more of an opportunist when it comes to meals, as far as I can see. Um, some days they'll eat everything uh, from streamers to dry flies to nymphs. Some days you're going to have better... Uh, with streamers, someday you're gonna have better with dry flies, some days you're gonna be better with nymphs. The patterns of those streamers, dry flies, or nymphs don't seem to be all that important to the brook trout. Now, I know, I know, there's probably a couple of you out there that are like, oh, bull, the pattern's very important. Maybe it is, maybe it is where you fish. Maybe you fish and catch 100 fish every day, as opposed to my, you know, handful of fish. Whatever, I'm just telling you, Brook trout are opportunists. If they're hitting dries, you could throw something big and ugly on top of the water, and it could resemble nothing that's out there. But they're going to hammer it, in my experience, because it's a bug on top of the water, and they don't care what it is. The opportunity arises. You're talking small streams. They don't have a lot of time to look at it in some places. Pocket water. They're just going to grab whatever comes by. Um, they'll do the same thing on slow waters, though, too. So the whole point is... Take streamers, nymphs, and dries and figure out which one's working. The pattern's probably not going to be that as important. And number five, the number five thing you need to find brook trout. The guts to take a chance and explore. The guts to take a chance and explore. Everybody's like, hey, can you, where would you go? Where do you go? Can you point me to a brook trout stream? Yeah, <laughs> right, as if. Listen, the first people who fished for brook trout over here, they had to find them. And then it got easier for everybody else. But everybody else still had to find them on their own eventually. You know, word of mouth only goes so far and it gets lost. And people don't like to tell other people because they went there because nobody else was there. Um, listen. You will run into people who are going to be friendly. I got a place for you to go. That's what they'll tell you, and they'll send you someplace. There you go. There's your brook trout stream. But there's a lot of people that they put in the work to find those brook trout streams, and they don't want to give them away. Okay, now it's time to get serious. Everything I'm talking about. 
to find brook trout, you need a map. You need some good footwear. You need your fly rod and your fly box. And you need to want to go out and explore and find them. And not worry about if you're going to get skunked or not. So, this is the way it works. I decide, yep, I'm going to go to the Adirondacks. Okay. I start looking at areas that either I know well, but I haven't fished all the streams, which is impossible in the Adirondacks. There's like five, one, there's five bazillion lakes and streams and rivers in the Adirondacks. So for you to say, well, I don't know where to go. Dude, throw a map. Throw a dart at the map. Don't throw a map at a dart because that's not going to show you anything except the map on the floor. Put the map on the wall and throw a dart at the map. And then start looking for blue lines in that area. When you find the blue lines, see what the name of that river is. If you've got to go on Google Earth to look at it because the blue line isn't named on the map, go on Google Earth. Go to Google Maps. Uh, and when you find the name of that blue line that you just hit, here's the best tip. This is where technology comes in. And I imagine that New York isn't the only state to do this. But you can go on the New York State DEC website, and there's a search bar. And you take the name of whatever that blue line is, and you put it in the search bar. And there's a chance that... It's going to come up on the DEC website, and it might even tell you if they know what's in it. They don't know what's in everything. It might even tell you what fish are in it. And that's like way jump ahead for you. Cool. It says there's brook trout. No, oh, it says there's bass. It says there's rainbows. Whatever. That's awesome. Let's skip ahead, though. DEC has no information on their website about that stream, about that blue line. That's where the boots, the fly rod, and the fly box, and that will to take a chance comes in. There's a bazillion streams and rivers and creeks and lakes and ponds. And I'm, I think that's a pretty accurate number, bazillion, in the Adirondacks, let alone New York State. But I'm talking about the Adirondacks. There's a bazillion of them. Pick a blue line and go check it out. That is how you find brook trout or whatever fish it is where you are that you're like, oh, I don't know any good places. You got to go and find them. That's how the other people that know about those places, that's how they find them. Not everybody is going to be willing to key you in on these places. I literally don't want to tell everybody where I fish. Because I fish some pretty cool places where I don't even see a footprint in a, of another human being, which is why I go. Don't get mad at me if I don't tell you where it is. You could be, you could be a great person. Awesome. Find the blue lines. Go check them out. But for me to tell somebody, I'm going here and I've been fishing here all the time and it's a killer fishery. That person was cool, so I told him, great. That person tells somebody else who's cool and isn't going to tell a bunch of other people. Okay, by the time it gets down the line, now 12 people have been told. Friend to friend to friend to friend. All these people are cool, but it doesn't matter. There's a dozen cool people now on this stream where there were none. Or one, just me. I'm selfish. A lot of fishermen are. I'm not going to... Anybody with a conscience isn't going to start naming off all their fishing spots because they know that people suck and they'll start finding cigarette butts and worm containers and you know where I'm going with this. People suck. So listen, if you want to find brook trout, pick a blue line and take a chance. I can tell you right now, as far as the Adirondacks go, I think I searched out last year in 2019. Let me think about this.
off the top of my head, I went and searched seven blue lines in one particular part of the Adirondack Park that I had never been on before. Seven of them. You know how many didn't have brook trout? One. It's not as hard as you think. You, you can't be like, oh man, I don't know any good brook trout places. Go find them. Trust me, it's not that hard anymore. It used to be. You're going to strike out. It's inevitable. You're going to strike out on streams where there actually are brook trout and you just don't catch any and you're going to think there's none. And that keeps the brook trout safe. What I'm saying is, you just got to do it. Boots, fly rod, fly box, gust to take a chance. That is it. So here's the deal. I think you're supposed to end every episode with subscribe to my channel, buy my books on Amazon. Uh, people have these standard things. You know how I'm going to end all my episodes from now on? I've done it a couple times, but it's become it's going to become the standard ending. Ready? Call in sick. Go fishing. See you next time.